This street, famously named for John Adams, actually begins with a nod to a different patriot, John Hancock. We are on the site of the birthplace of John Hancock, the signer of the Declaration of Independence. Dr. Edward Fitzgerald is executive director of the Quincy Historical Society. He says the parsonage where John Hancock was born burnt down in 1758 and was rebuilt with Quincy granite. It is now home to the Historical Society, here at the beginning of Adams Street in Quincy. Adams said he wanted to build a Quincy Stone way back in 1822. It's a National Historic Landmark built by William Ware and Henry Van Brunt back in the 1870s. A magnificent example of really Gothic Revival architecture here in America. The Adams Estate itself is just a few blocks up the road. John and Abigail Adams moved to Peacefield, or the Old House as some call it, in 1788. John and Abigail bought the house without seeing it first. They'd been living in Paris, they'd been living in London, had gotten used to a certain size of residence. And Abigail sees the residence for the first time and falls down on her knees and starts weeping because she realizes that the house is much smaller than she had remembered it being. So the family added on through the years and the old house became the building visitors see today, now a national historical park. Both historic sites sit here at the start of Adams Street, but Fitzgerald says when the street officially got its name is a little unclear. The earliest Quincy City directories, which are right after the Civil War, it's already being called Adams Street, and I think probably a good generation or two before that, it's gotten the name. It winds because it is based on a Native American trail that was pre-existing the European colonization. It really is the basis for the first Boston to Plymouth Road. No shortage of prominent historic figures have called Adams Street home. John Adams and John Quincy Adams, John Hancock, and even the late President George H.W. Bush, born on Adams Street in nearby Milton. And there's Thomas Hutchinson, a prominent loyalist and the last royal governor of the Massachusetts Bay Colony. His Milton estate is where he famously retreated after his Boston home was destroyed in the Stamp Act riots. Today, the home is gone, but there's a quarter mile long trail to enjoy here at Governor Hutchinson's Field. Across from the field here in Milton sits the Forbes House, a Greek Revival-style mansion built in 1833. The Forbes family amassed their wealth through early trade with China. People would go there for years at a time, and they wanted to earn um, their competence, so enough money that they could come back and essentially retire. Four generations of Forbes family members lived in the home on Milton Hill. During their travels, Captain Robert Bennett Forbes and his brother, John Murray Forbes, collected artifacts from China and brought them back to the home. Vaughn says there's one very small item that has a sizable backstory. One thing we have is a portrait of a man named Hukwa, some say Haukwa. He was one of 13 Hong merchants appointed by the emperor to do business with the Forbes family. And Haukwa was the richest man in the world at the time of his death. So in the mid 1800s, he was worth $26 million. We'll do the math. It's around $8 billion. He got to be very good friends with the Forbes brothers. We have a finial, a coral finial, that was on his hat. It indicated his status in society just below nobility. We are the only ones who have Haukwa's finial. And if Haukwa's finial seems like a who knew fact. The captain's granddaughter, Mary Forbes, later had a log cabin built on the six acre property. She spent about 50 years of her life collecting everything she could to do with Lincoln and Civil War. That included building a log cabin replica in the backyard where she could open up the cabin and share her collection with visitors. The property became the Museum of the American China Trade in 1964. Exhibits include the family's collection from the China Trade, plus furniture and painting of Mary Forbes' beloved dogs. I do think they are kind of an underappreciated family. I think a lot of people don't really know the Forbes family story. And one descendant of the Forbes family that you may have heard of, U.S. Senator, former Secretary of State, Democratic presidential nominee, John Forbes. Carry. Yeah, I think a few people have heard of him. <laughs> um, the interior of the Forbes House Museum uh, is now open again for tours, but you do have to call ahead and schedule those tours. There's also a tour outside that focuses on the history of the Forbes family, but also of the native people who lived there before they ever arrived. All right. Up next, Adam Street crisscrosses a changing fields corner.